This is Christopher Maldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today I'm going to do a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 33 and 34. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 35 and 36, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the anime movie Mariah of the Future. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments, and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So, uh, the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a recap of volume 33 of Skip Beat, and then give my thoughts on the volume, and do the same for volume 34. So, let's get right to it um, with uh, the recap of volume 33 of Skip Beat. So starting with chapter 195, Setsu is on top of Kane and stays in character asking how he can be jealous over a phone call. Setsu kisses Ren's forehead and he wakes up and becomes, becomes Kane Hill again because uh, he was kind of like someone else. Setsu tells Kane Hill that she'll leave her marks on him. She then opens up his shirt. In chapter 196, Setsu left teeth marks on Kane Hill's neck because she didn't know how to do it right. Kane Hill gets on top of Setsu, but she gets angry at him and leaves. Uh, Kane try stops her, and she tells him she just wanted to get some food. Uh, Kane Hill leaves, but reflects on what happened. He hasn't been twisted around someone's little finger like that acting-wise in a long time. He resolves that he doesn't want to lose against anybody with his acting. Chapter 197, Kyoko dressed as Setsu is preparing breakfast but can't forget seeing Mr. Suruga's body. She becomes Setsu again and gets uh, Kane Hill, who is in the shower. Mursame, uh, on the set, is furious that Kane Hill is two hours late. The director calls Setsu and turns out that they leisurely ate breakfast and stopped by shops on the way. They hold hands as they walk to, ha to work. Um... Jelly Woods, um, who everyone calls Ten, uh, calls President Laurie, telling him that Ren is acting strange. Laurie says he'll give him a call. Back on the set, Murasami yells at Kane for being so late. He tells him that what he can't bear is for people to forget his acting. So that's what Kane yells at, telling him. On chapter 198, a female co-star runs into Kane Hill. Kyoku... Uh, Kyoko dresses Setsu apologizes to the director for being late the last two days. The director wanted to ask Setsu about what was on Kane Hill's neck, but he stopped himself. The co-stars talk to each other, and one of them says that Kane Hill and Setsu are lovers and saw them holding hands like a couple. Setsu walks with Kane Hill, but Setsu looks preoccupied and out of sorts. Kane Hill hugs her and tells her that she has nothing to worry about. We then see Kyoko standing at the very edge of a cliff as Ren and Kyoko look at each other. And chapter 199, a co-star, Monaka, uh, starts talking to Kane Hill, who ignores her. She seems infatuated with him. Uh, Murasame gets between them and says to Kane that he was sort of nice to Monaka. That Kane Hill was nice to Monaka. Uh, Setsu asks what he did and was shown that as she went to get drinks, as Monaka went to get drinks, he, Kane Hill smiled at her and petted her head. Setsu gets angry at Kane, but tells her, but he tells her that he has some compassion to small animals like hamsters, which I guess Monaka is a, a pretty much a hamster, <laughs> to in the eyes of Kane Hill. Setsu still stays seemingly mad at him, even though she says that she's not. She gets alone and. And then there's a monologue about her emotions g getting released. We're then shown the two on that same cliff from the previous chapter. And Kyoko willingly falls off. We're then shown the last lock on the box, if you remember, like the whole thing with the box in the very, very beginning. The lock falls off and the box is open. So in chapter 200, a new crew member helps out. And he's tall and wearing a shocking pink uniform. Setsu and Kane Hill see him and immediately, immediately notice he's wearing a uniform in Love Me Pink. They assume that he's President Lori. 
Kane he he'll tell Setsu that he's fine now. Setsu admits that the box is now c completely open. Oh, she she admits like in a monologue. Uh, Setsu does not want the president to find out though. Uh, Kane he'll get Setsu and tells her they're going to Studio F. Setsu walks ahead and Kane he'll grabs her. Hugs her and tells her to stop sulking over the whole thing with Monaka. She blushes. She blushes, but also has a confused expression as he hugs her. The volume ends with President Lori seeing her face as Kane Neal hugs her. So, some thoughts here. Um, you know, 200 chapters in. I guess 200 chapter 200 had to end on a bang. Setsu. Biting Kane Heel really goes to show that when Kyoko is someone else, she is someone else, you know? Because as Kyoko, she can't even imagine Ren Tsuruga um, with, you know, shirtless and naked. As Setsu, she sees him showering, you know? Um, obviously, you can tell that it still, it played into Setsu and Kyoko pretty well, though, you know, because the thing is, like, Setsu is real forward and aggressive and whatnot, but Kyoko still doesn't know the art of, you know, adult romance, I guess is, is the way I'll say it. And, um, it kind of shows here. So she just kind of bit her, bit Kane Hill's neck, woke him up. Kane Hill, man. Kuan, Kane Hill. I mean, I, I guess this was one of the worries that Ren had coming into this, uh, and, and President Laurie had as well, coming into this. And, and that was that Kane Hill is so much like Kuan that eventually. Kwan might take over. Which makes me wonder about Kwan, you know, because, like, Kwan's, like, kind of crazy. I, I guess he, like I said before, I, I can't help but feel that Ren Suruga might have, like, a multiple personality disorder. <laughs> because, um, you know, uh, you got Kwan, Ren Suruga, Kane Hill, and what not and and it's up to Setsu to kind of set him straight um okay I, the box is open you know I mean it was kind of leading up to this this whole time Kyoko was um kind of struggling with this we kind of uh saw this when they're holding hands and it really goes to show that Setsu and Kyoko aren't so far apart we can make the strong assumption that Kyoko, that she is officially in love with Ren Suruga. If there's any doubt before, um, I, I don't think there's any doubt now. We kind of knew it already, but her feelings are showing. She seems to be kind of denying it and trying to hold back, and it, it se is seemingly unsuccessful the box is open she loves Ren but does this mean in the future there are other suitors here um, you have show obviously uh, being the main other suitor here and but the feelings opened for Ren no one else we'll see how that turns out President Lori saw this that was the whole big thing about the end of the volume it's like oh wait this is the dude that wanted Kyoko to find love I mean, that's a whole thing about the love me section and being a love me member it is to find you know and that, that was like President Lori's like goal and like it happened you know it, it happened like it seems like he knows now I assume he's going to be jumping for joy, but we don't quite know yet. So, before we get into the next volume, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismonong.com, and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Also, do you like anime? Do you like manga? Or 
you like action, adventure, and fantasy, then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for just four dollars and ninety nine cents via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. It's a fun, um, crazy fantasy adventure that you won't forget. Links to buy it will be provided on the page description. So let's get on to volume thirty four. Chapter 201. Kyoko wakes up at her home angry. She recalls the president telling her to meet him at his office. Kyoko does not want to meet him. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, well, actually, Kyoko does not want President Lori to tell Mr. Suruga about this. She goes to the president's office, and Ren and Yoshiro are there. Kyoko gets pale, but everyone's acting normal. So Kyoko assumes President Lori hasn't told anyone about her yet. President Lori tells them that Setsu, Ren's good luck charm, is going to take some time off. Uh, he tells them that Kyoko's exams are coming up soon, and that's the reason why. Ren agrees, and they are all about to leave, including Kyoko. But President Lori tells Kyoko to stay. He needs to thoroughly discuss the main subject with her. Chapter 202. Today is apparently White Day. And Ren reveals that he still needs to get a gift for Kyoko. President Lori uh, tells Kyoko that he won't tell Ren that she is in love with him. He reveals that he finds her love drama very thrilling. Kyoko admits that she'll do everything, everything she can not to let Ren find out she loves him. President Lori asks if she'll congratulate Ren with her best smile if he goes out with someone and marries her. Kyoko almost says that she will, but she can't get herself to say it. Kyoko starts crying as she says that she becomes an idiot and cold-blooded jerk when she's in love, and explains that Mr. Suruga doesn't belong to anyone. President Lori presents a mirror to her and asks what she will do. In Chapter 203, Kyoko struggles with her decision, and President Lori tells her not to look away. He tells her that all of this will enrich her acting. Kyoko still chooses to ignore her feelings for Ren and leaves. It's revealed that Kyoko fell for Ren during Ren's acting test as Kotsky in Dark Moon, so way back with Mio. President Lori reveals that he wants to polish Kyoko into a first class actress. He then looks at a globe. In Chapter 204, Kyoko and Jelly Woods arrive at Guam for the final scene of Tragic Marker, the uh, film that Ren's working on that has Kane Hill. Jelly Woods was not expecting to travel with Kyoko, and it's revealed that Ren hasn't reserved his hotel room under the name Ren Suruga, and doesn't want Kyoko asking for him. Uh, Jelly Woods tells Kyoko that everyone calls her Miss Ten or Ten, but doesn't explain the origin of the name Ten. Ten has been trying to call Ren, but he hasn't been answering and has been stall and she and Ten has been stalling Kyoko for time. Uh, she makes up a story given to her by President Lori about Ren and asks Kyoko to have dinner with her later. Kyoko tries to wait in a room by herself but ends up uh, going down to the beach. Kyoko sees a man getting out of the water, and the man looks surprised to see Kyoko. In chapter 205, the man turns out to be Kuan. It's revealed that Kyoko disclosed her whereabouts to her, her strange mother so that she could travel overseas. Kyoko thinks that the man is Korn, or Korn, Kuan, or Korn, but grown up. Kuan plays along and writes in the sand, Are you Kyoko? In chapter 206, Kyoko starts crying that Korn grew up well. Korn writes to Kyoko that he'll speak to her using the voice of someone of this world. Uh, he touches her forehead and speaks and tells her that he's using the voice of someone she thought about recently. Uh, which apparently was Ren Suruga. And that actually surprises Kuan. Korn tells her that in the human world, he can only use magic once a day. They go to a hotel balcony, and Kyoko buys a drink and a coconut called uh, In Love with Guam. At the end of the volume, Kyoko walks, walks up to Korn and asks why his physical traits are so close to Mr. Suruga's. So, 
some thoughts on the volume. Kyoko's meeting with President Lori. She just can't do it. You know, she just can't get herself to tell Ren that she loves him. And admits this to President Lori. Lori has his own agenda here, you know. He's a conniving one sometimes, you know. He is thrilled. He finds this her love drama thrilling, apparently. And it's very much in line with President Lori. He's making moves behind the scenes. He's not going to outright be Cupid, but he is going to set up the situation that is favorable to Kyoko and Ren getting together, or you would think. That's easy. President Lori's M.O. He makes it, he's not exactly nice about things either. I mean, the, the mirror thing, you know, uh, that, that wasn't exactly easy on Kyoko, and she took it pretty tough. Um, I mean, and she even still, even with that, she still denies her feelings for Ren in the sense that she wishes to just ignore them. I guess it kind of stalls for time. It, it, it allows for the manga to play out a little longer than I would want it to, to be honest with you. But that's kind of how it works. You're not going to see Kyoko, I guess, telling Ren that she, you know, just, you know, a, a confession from either of them. I, I, I mean, I, even up to this point, I'll say it right now. I don't get the impression that either of them are so willing right now to confess to each other. I don't, even after all, all of these revelations, I, I, I don't think Kyoko is ready for that. I don't think Ren is ready to do that yet. You know, um, uh, that's, you, you know, you just don't get that idea. You know, Ren's so busy with being the best actor. Same with Kyoko. It's still not there yet, you know. It's not like overflowing romantic feelings or anything like that. We got a little bit of a, a way from this story now, though, you know. Because now we're back, we're in Guam, you know, and things are happening. Jelly Woods is around, 10, and she's pretty much the liaison. She's kind of doing the work that President Lori wants to. Like I said, President Lori's trying to make situations happen, you know. Um, he's kind of working things behind the scenes, in a sense. In a sense, uh, is using Jelly Woods to those ends. Jelly Woods knows a lot and um, I, about Ren and, and whatnot. I, I think she knows about the feelings. I, I don't actually know if she she actually knows about the feelings. I like her character. She's super cute, um, but like she's an adult too, you know. Um, but I think the, one of the bigger things that happened in the volume, obviously, is the int reintroduction of adult corn. And um, Kyoko and corn met again. You know, corn is this fairy. You know, and, and Kuon, Ren Suriga, whatever you want to call him, is playing along. Like I said, there's a lot of aspects to Ren Suriga that that's that's present. There's corn. There's Kuan. Corn seems nice. The nice version of Kuan. And then there's Kuan, the bad guy. Ren Suruga. And, and then there's like Kane Hill and whatnot. The, the, the parts that he acts. Kyoko's got a lot of different uh, aspects to her too. So that, you know, this is going to be really interesting because she's totally playing along. Or, or he's totally playing along, excuse me. And she's falling for it, except with the end of the volume. Now, I don't know if he's just going to make some sort of weird, some weird thing, you know, some weird excuse as to why he's so much like Ren Suruga. Uh, uh, I mean, this was kind of like a gag that Kyoko can really tell the measurements of people. And that's how she's able to make such realistic um, cursed dolls of people and whatnot. We'll see if that the cat will come out of the bag. Because that's another thing that's going on in this series that, that's 
not reported or not happening so far. The cat hasn't come out of the bag a lot of times with a lot of things. We Corn or Ren doesn't know that Kyoko is Bo. Kyoko does not know that Corn is Ren Suriga. Um. So it's it, there's there's this kind of interesting thing going on. Is the cat cat gonna come out of the bag? How's this gonna work? You, you know. Um. I guess we'll see in the next volume. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this manga review. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 35 and 36, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the anime movie Mariah of the Future. Thank you, and until next time.